So this will be a short discussion on setting parameters for electrotherapy. So we'll get on to electrotherapy, and there's a lot of similarities depending on the waveform. I'm going to choose VMS first because it's a very popularly used waveform for a lot of our applications. So you see it has a, a set of defaults to it, and if you understand the parameters and you look at that set of defaults, it really says that it has something to do with muscle contraction, and that's what VMS first really excels in. If we want to make some changes to a lot of those parameters, we hit the customization button. Okay, so the first thing is phase duration. So the phase duration is the length of time that a particular phase, either the positive or the negative, or the equivalency of that uh, elliptical waveform in a, in a Russian. So that's the length of the time that the current is actually going to be active. So 200, it defaults to because it's not too high, it's not too low. It'll reach most of the muscles and a lot of what it is that we're trying to accomplish. But if we have a stubborn muscle or nerve, we can increase the phase duration and it goes all the way up to 400. So for example, in a large person with uh, quadricep dysfunction, post-ACL reconstruction, oftentimes you may go up to 400 microseconds to get a deeper penetration and a higher mode of recruitment. On the flip side, if it's too high on a smaller patient, smaller muscle group, lower function, it can actually be uncomfortable and so we have the ability to change that, and frankly, that's why it's actually preset to 200. And then we also have the a duty cycle or a frequency. So this is a, a burst duty cycle. So this is the number of pulses per second. It defaults to 50 because that's a very commonly utilized length of time uh, to maximize motor unit recruitment for muscle tissue. We can also increase or decrease as it meets your, meets your needs. And there's also an anti-fatigue setting that will help assist and determine whether or not the current is going to be increased or decreased depending on how the, how the patient is, uh, is responding. Channel mode. It defaults to single channel mode. We can set two channels. So we can have it uh, reciprocal or co-contract. So reciprocal means that both channels are going to contract um, sequentially versus co-contract, they will, they will contract simultaneously. And again, during that, you can actually set the intensities either together, or you can set them different, depending on the size of the muscle groups and how they actually interact as far as opposition goes. Cycle time. Under cycle time, we have ramp. So ramp is the length of time that it takes to go from zero current up to the full current, whatever it is that you have the amplitude set at. So reasons you may want to change that is having a ramp time it allows the patient to uh, have an introduction to the current so they can better prepare themselves. You could also use it as a biofeedback mechanism, as we've shown in our sit to stand. When we start to feel the current, uh, that means we're going to we're going to produce our, our nose over the toes to initiate a particular movement pattern. So by the time that we get to the full current density, we're actually initiating a particular activity all the way down to, and we can set that down to zero. Zero means we'll go to the highest current instantaneously and we can further enhance neurological function as a result of motor unit recruitment much more rapidly. And then we have on and off time. On time is the length of time that the stimulation is going to be live, and then we have the off time often referred to as the, as the rest period. So it defaults to 1050 because that's classically for strength augmentation, but you can change that and have uh, longer or shorter on off times relative to the types of activities that you're performing. So for example, if you're not worried about fatigue, but you actually want to perform a higher number of repetitions, you can set and change that on-off time ratio a little bit differently. Amplitude is set with the dial here. Okay, so as we increase the amplitude, increasing the dial, and just remember that you want to get to that point as quickly as possible, because the longer it takes, uh, the current density is going to be introduced into the patient, and we won't initiate a cycle till we actually hit that uh, start button. That's also where you can pause it, and a pause is interesting because it allows us to cease the treatment, but it doesn't reset it, versus when you hit a stop button, it stops the treatment, and if you wanted to reinitiate, you would actually have to reset an entire set of parameters.